Welcome to the Therapy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. Well, hey there, friend. Welcome back to another Put It Into Practice episode on this fine Saturday. As you're listening to this episode, it is Saturday, March 4th, 2023. And I don't know about where you live, but the tree pollen here in South Carolina is kicking my butt. I have felt like I was coming down with something for this whole entire week, and it has really just thrown me for a loop. I'm waiting for a really big, hard rain, and I'm hopeful it's coming soon. Um, I drive a blue Toyota Sequoia and it looks green because of all of this pollen and I'm congested. I'm living on Claritin. I'm drinking a lot of tea and drinking water and it's just, oh, so <laughs> I hope if you are dealing with allergies, it's not as bad as it is for me and my kids are dealing with it too. Luckily, my husband, he doesn't have any issues with allergies, so he is a lucky guy. Okay. So before we jump into this episode, which I'm going to share all about burnout. I'm going to talk about the common causes of burnout and then how to overcome burnout. But I want to remind you that I have a free ebook for you that you can download. It's called 15 Easy Habits to Support Your Mental Health. Head over to the link in the show notes. Grab that free ebook. Also comes with a self-care checklist and you can download it, save it to your phone. And anytime that you need some support for your emotional or mental health, you can just open up that ebook and as they said on Seinfeld, on Seinfeld, serenity now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I'm hopeful that this ebook will give you some ideas and um, give you some support when you're maybe when you're dealing with some tough stuff. And don't forget, you guys can always reach out to me and ask me a question that you would like me to answer on the podcast. Of course, I will keep it anonymous, but you can find me on Instagram, Lisa Mustard Podcaster. You can also send me an email, which is lisa at lisamustard.com. It's pretty easy to remember, I think. All right, so let's talk about this thing called burnout. What the heck is it? And have you experienced it? So burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion that results from prolonged stress and pressure. It is a type of chronic stress that occurs when someone feels overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet the constant demands placed on them. And burnout can affect various aspects of a person's life, including their work, relationships, and physical health. And it can affect anyone, but it is commonly experienced by people who work in high-stress environments, such as healthcare, social work, therapy, <laughs> and education. But definitely you can experience burnout even if you don't work in those environments. Or, you know, if you work for yourself, for example, you can definitely experience burnout. I have been experiencing it the past week. Um, I have a feeling I know how I got there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that as I go over how to deal with burnout. But some common symptoms of, of burnout include exhaustion, feeling physically and emotionally drained, um, exhausted, even after getting enough sleep or rest. And I am a big I'm a big believer in getting my eight hours of sleep. And so I know that my burnout isn't coming from lack of sleep, reduced performance or productivity, including feeling apathetic, uninterested or unproductive. Yep. I felt that too. Are you checking these things off as I'm going down the list of symptoms, cynicism or negativity towards your work colleagues or clients? Yes, I have felt that, but I kind of keep that in check because, um, I know that's burnout is about me and not so much about my work or, uh, it has to do with my work, but it doesn't have to do with like the work that I do. I'm aware that it's my responsibility to handle my work in my colleagues and clients, if that makes sense. Also, you might feel a little bit of withdrawal, withdrawing from social interactions or activities that were once enjoyable. You're having a hard time concentrating, um, making decisions or remembering details. You might find that you are increased in your irritability factor, impatience, or frustration with others. And then you can also have physical symptoms like headaches, muscle tension, and sleep problems or disturbances. But I do want to remind you guys that everyone experiences burnout differently, and not everyone will experience all of these symptoms. It's also important to seek support and help if you are experiencing these symptoms to prevent further negative impacts on your physical and mental health. So if you are finding yourself in burnout, and it's not getting better, or it's been going on for weeks, it's getting in the way of daily functioning, then definitely seek support, uh, contact a coach or a therapist. Links for some support resources are in the show notes, okay? 
Overcoming burnout can definitely be a challenging process that may require time and effort, but here we go. I'm going to give y'all some strategies that may be helpful. These are the things that I do. I'm going to talk, I'll talk about them um, if they apply to me and how I implement them. So identify the causes. You want to look at the root causes of your burnout and try to address them. This may involve reducing your workload, setting boundaries, or seeking support. So this is the usual place I go to as I try to identify what's the root cause of my burnout. So I'm pretty good at taking a step back when I realize I'm burnout and going, okay, how did I get here and what started it? All right. So I want to encourage you to do that. You also want to be very mindful of engaging in activities that promote your self-care, such as exercise, relaxation, your hobbies, because self-care can help reduce stress and promote emotional and physical well-being. I like to go on walks and I like to just listen to music or listen to a walking meditation. Um, I like to take time off of social media for number one. I know I've talked about that many times in past episodes, just get off the social media. Cause I feel like sometimes that can ag- aggravate my burnout. Um, and then I seek support. That's the next tip. Seek support from family, friends, or even a professional like me, having a support system can help reduce feelings of isolation and provide emotional support. And I talked to my husband about my burnout. Um, I talked to my friends about it. Um, even my colleagues, you definitely want to learn how to practice mindfulness techniques, such as meditation or deep breathing, which is really going to help reduce stress and promote relaxation. I know I've mentioned to y'all that I really like the app. Um, let me pull it up. So I don't give you the wrong name. I think it's, it is called the mindfulness app. You can actually get a free trial to it. I'll put the link in the show notes if you guys want to check it out, but every morning it gives me a prompt and at night it gives me a prompt to log in and do some mindfulness based uh, exercises. I really like it. Another way that you can help prevent burnout is to take breaks, like take your vacations when you have the time, take a mental health day if you need it. Um, This can definitely help reduce stress and recharge your batteries. So for example, a lot of the times if I have a doctor's appointment, I will take if, and then if I have the leave, I'll take the entire day off for a doctor's appointment because it's a lot of, it's hard to go to a doctor's appointment, get back to the office, get back into the mind frame. So I will do that a good bit. Like if I have a doctor's appointment, I will schedule other things that day that I can just take a a, a day off from work. Another thing that you would really want to try working on is building your resilience, such as developing problem solving skills and a positive mindset. It can help you handle stress better and difficult situations because when your mind is in the right place and a growth mindset, you you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish and how you start to feel better about things going on around you that you don't have control over. Are you thinking of starting a podcast this year? Or perhaps you're a seasoned podcaster and you're looking for someone to take the podcast production off your plate. If so, we are currently taking on new clients and would love to be your production partner of choice. My name is Chelsea Weaver and I am the owner of Chelsea Weaver Podcasting. I offer podcast startup packages, audio and video editing, plus show notes, graphics, and reels. So consider us a one-stop shop for all your podcast needs. A little bit about me, I have over five plus years of experience in audio and video production. I am an army veteran who served in Afghanistan during Operation Enduring Freedom. I partner with other female veterans who are also experienced in podcast production and social media services. We'd love to chat with you about your podcasting and social media needs and can be reached at chelseaweaverpodcasting.com. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A-W-E-A-V-E-R podcasting.com. You also want to set realistic expectations for yourself and your workload to avoid taking on too much at once. And that for me was part of my burnout the past week. I was excited about some projects I was working on. So I, instead of just focusing on one of the projects, I expanded it to a few projects. And I realized as I was getting into them that I kind of was in a little bit over my head. So I had to take a little bit of a step back and set uh, realistic expectations for the workload that I had agreed to take on. Another thing that I found really helpful is adjusting your perspective or shifting your perspective and focusing on the positive aspects of your work that can really help you reduce feelings of burnout. So for example, when I'm starting to feel burnout, um, and I'm seeing clients, I remember there's a reason I'm doing this work, right? And there's a reason I got into this work and cause I truly have a heart to help people and I want to help people feel better. I want to help them live a life, um, I want to help them live their best lives. So when I'm able to shift my perspective to that and focus on the positive aspects of how do I help people do that, 
lots of things can change in my in in my day. So I want to encourage you to you know adjust your perspective or shift your perspective and look at what is positive about the work that you do or the relationships that you're having because burnout isn't definitely about work. I think a lot of us experience it in our work, but it can also come to you know relationships. If you're a mom you know, and you've got a lot going on with your kids, you know, if you, if you're like me and you take your kids, you know, four or five days a week to different activities, burnout can happen. But I remind myself that I'm doing this for a reason. And the reason is I want my girls to have these experiences. And if I don't take them or my husband takes them, then they're just going to sit at home (laughs) and, and bother us to watch TV or get on the computer. So I have to remember that, that, you know, that's a shift in my perspective of, of when I'm taking them to practice to different things that they do. Another strategy that I find to be helpful is setting clear boundaries and prioritizing tasks, because this helps me prevent burnout by reducing the workload and creating a better work-life balance. So I set a boundary yesterday um, regarding my podcast that really helped me lighten up my workload. And I feel so much better that I was able to say no to something, even though it was a really great opportunity. Um, it, it really just was too much right now. And, and we retooled the opportunity to be something different, which helps me. It just makes more sense for the amount of work that I can take on right now. <laughs> Bear with me, you guys. My allergies are just like, ah, they're kicking in today. So, <laughs> oh, okay. We're going to get through this episode, y'all. I promise. Okay. The next strategy is reevaluate your goals and priorities and adjust them as necessary. And this may involve reprioritizing tasks, once again, delegating responsibilities, or like earlier, setting more realistic expectations for yourself. So reevaluate your goals, where you are right now, where you want to be, and maybe you need to make some changes to how you're going to get there. And that's okay. As long as you're moving forward and taking steps toward reaching, reaching your goals, it's okay. Just you might have to you know, change up how you're going to get there. And you can, you might need to consider a career change. If your burnout has been going on for months, you've tried all these things, it's not working. You know, if your burnout is related to your job or career, consider making a career change or seeking a different work environment. Now, a lot of people don't want to hear that, especially in the helping professions, because they feel like a failure or they feel some shame or guilt around that. But I just want to encourage you, if it is so bad, that you are burnt out and the thought of, you know, going to work is just overwhelming and you don't want to get out of bed in the morning, then you've got, you've got to look at that and you've got to work on that. And so I would encourage you to seek some type of professional help. And that could be with a therapist, that could be with a career counselor, that could be with a, a life coach, but it's important because this is your life. And if you're dealing with burnout, then that's affecting your daily functioning, then it's time for you to take a good, hard, long look at that and make some decisions. So like I said, it's maybe helpful to seek professional help from a therapist, a counselor who specializes in burnout and stress management. Now, once again, I want to remind you that not everyone is going to experience burnout the same way. We, we might experience differently and what works for one person may not work for another. So it is essential to find strategies that work best for you and prioritizing your mental and physical well-being. I hope you guys found some value in this episode. Um, burnout is, is something that's very common right now. The past couple of years, people are just burnt out <laughs> for a lot of different reasons. And I think it's important that you take a look at your burnout and figure out what the underlying cause is, because there usually is something going on underneath that maybe you haven't considered. So like I said, be sure to check the show notes for links on resources that will give you some ideas for where you might be able to find a counselor. And I hope you guys found this episode helpful. Once again, don't forget, you can always send me an email or message and I will answer a question for you on this show. You guys have a great rest of your weekend wherever you are. And I hope that you are allergy free. I'm looking forward to that uh, big rain that I hope we get sometime soon. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamustard.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank Thank you. you.